Welcome to the Segmented Podcast, the show where we bring you three segments each episode, ranging from discussion to improv. How are you doing, Ben? <laughs> I'm doing quite well today, M- Mr. Mr. Nomich plays. Uh, yes. Do you know what's funny? The fact that what? back when we did the Nomich and Super Tendo Boy podcast, Nomich plays was my actual name, but now nobody... There's probably a lot of listeners that have no idea what I did. So if Ben ever calls me No Much Plays Again, it's because a long time ago when we met back in 2015, I had a YouTube channel known as No Much Plays because I used to play video games and do different gameplay videos. But um, anyway, that's why he sometimes calls me No Much Plays, and that's why I sometimes call him Super Tender Boy. But I'm doing very well because this is the first episode of Season 3! It is! Oh boy! Oh boy! Season 3! Zooey Mama. Ah, Zooey Mama. (laughs) I don't know why I said that. Zoink, Scoob. Um, I I hoped I would never hear that that word or phrase ever again in my life. Well, uh, that won't happen again. Actually, it definitely probably will be. Um, Anyway, what segments do we have today, Benjamin? We have some great segments. We have everybody's favorite, Blankology. We got ologies. You got ears. We're going to tell you about them. Uh, we got a new segment ooh, ooh, called ooh. Half-Life, uh-huh. um, not relating to the franchise by Valve Corporations. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to do something that's called Would You Rather, but not just Would You Rather in general. It's using a website called either or either.io, and it basically gives you Would You Rathers, and then we're going to discuss them and talk about the most interesting ones. Very similarly to the way we did uh, Will You Press the Button. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm quite excited for today's episode. That makes sense. I was also going to make a joke about Half-Life, and I was going to say, because unlike Half-Life, we actually have a third season. Ooh, that's (laughs) fitting. I like that. I thought it was a good joke. It was a good joke. Segment one, Blankology. So basically what we did was we went to the Wikipedia article for list of words ending in ology, and basically both brought are going to bring to the table some ologies, (laughs) or usually studies of something, and uh, basically what we'll do is bring them and then just discuss them. They're usually pretty wacky and zany and just fun. So anyway, Ben, what is our first one? Our first ology on the table is characterology, which is the study of character reading, reading characters, that attempts to combine revised physiognomy, reconstructed pharaonology, and amplified pathognomy, ethnology, sociology, and anthropology. Wow. So someone was just like, you know... I, I just, I don't like having to call them different things. Let's, you know, let's tweak this one, tweak that one, tweak those five. And there you go. We got a new ology. There you go, guys. Stop calling it. You're not an anthropologist. You're a characterologist. Obviously, I'm trying to consolidate stuff. Thank me, please. I'm, I'm doing a good job. The thing is, I feel like that's just so, like... I don't know. At that point, is it is it even necessary? Cause like it's just it's like when when you learn to do a bunch of things, instead of just doing one thing really well, you do everything really poorly. And I feel like that's what characterologists do. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I mean, I'm kind of a generalist in like all of these areas, but I I can't tell you anything interesting or insightful about one you know. of them. So, I'm I'm actually a characterologist, which sounds like something that like a four-year-old came up with when you tried to explain to them what anthropology was. True. Which, by the way, when I was young, I thought was the study of um, arthropods. Oh, like... I I legitimately thought it was the study of, like, crabs and spiders until I was probably... Wait, arthropods are... Crabs are arthropods? Hello, this is uh, future editing, Noah. Yes, crabs are in fact arthropods because arthropods also encompass crustaceans. I, no, I don't know. Whatever whatever arthropods are. Aren't, maybe they're a type of crab. Maybe they're like a branch. I thought... But they have to have like an exotel. Arthropods are like um, like spiders and um, like silverfish and cave spiders. I'm just referring to Minecraft here. Uh, um, yeah, obviously, because Bane <laughs> of Arthropods. Yeah, way to go, way to go. That's that's how I learned my science, is when I got the terrible enchantment on my sword. I was like, you know what? I learned science today. I got Bane of Arthropods. See, it's not that bad having this enchantment. Honestly, that's the only reason, that, that's the first time I ever heard the word Arthropods, but I'm pretty sure they have to have like a, an exoskeleton or something. But anyway, um, my ology that I have is 
Buttonology. Do you want to guess what that is? Please be the study of butts being on things. Nope. Uh, just buttons. Dang it. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know if this necessarily means like technical buttons or like sewing buttons or something, but I th- I I don't know. I I think it's the study of uh. I had I had like a joke about another type of button, and then I completely forgot it halfway through. Um, yeah, buttons, what do you study about them? Like, the ones with three buttons are less strong than the ones with four buttons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it has a hyperlink when it says the study of buttons, it has a hyperlink, and it goes to clothing. So they are (laughs) the study of clothing. And actually, going to this Wikipedia article, there's a lot to learn about buttons. There's, like, different materials, different... There's like a whole bunch of history and it's kind of interesting. Dude, I want I want them to turn my my bones into buttons for my grandchildren to wear. I will keep that in mind. Right? Make sure you write that in your will. Send yourself yeah. an email right now. Also, I'd like to note <laughs> Send- that <laughs> I, I'd also like to note that there is a uh, type of button called a shank button. Um a shank button. A shank button. Also like the part of a ring that's like the actual band is also called the shank. So that's fun. Ah, something something you learned today. What a what a great great name for it. Be like, hey, ever made a shank before? And they'll be like, no, dude, why? And you like take a piece of metal and like bend it in a circle, <laughs> and you're like, ta-da, boom, shanked. <laughs> um, and then I was talking to my friend, and then she was all like, so if I propose to someone and I put the ring on their finger, could you say that I had, I shanked them? And I was like, I mean, you're Sorry. not wrong. <laughs> I put a shank on their hand. I don't. I don't know you can say you shanked them. Okay, <laughs> my next ology is another one that's just like the name is funny. So it's the systematic study and organization of everything dealing with knowing and knowledge. So you know what it, what it is, is called? Is it called like omniscology or something? No, it's 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 quite it's quite different than what you think. It's newology. Not in as like you <laughs> knew something, as in N O O like I knew a lot of stuff when I went to college. I knew it very well. Spelled N-O-O. I knew it. That's so stupid. <laughs> like, that's like the, like those jokes uh, that you hear that's like, I went to the college of whatever, whatever, and you know what the N stands for? Knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> Knowledge. Ha ha. My funny uncle. So funny. I'm sorry. You're forgiven. Um, um my next one is technology guess what that is is it the study of techno music no it's the study of children what <laughs> so it's spelled just like technology like modern technology but without no, the it's h not. without with, without the h so it's just t-e-c-n-o-l-o-g-y technology what and this episode is now going to be called modern technology without the h <laughs> why why <laughs> What is there like seriously like something to do with children? That's like the the lat Latin root is like tech. I don't know. Um, like Technochilon, like the city of like small babies or something. Technochilon, the city of small babies. Technochilon, technot children. Ah, technot children. They're babies. They're not children. Not children. The technot children. It's like a. (laughs) That's a line of, like, small robotic, like, dolls. Oh, my gosh. Wait a second. Remember the last time we did the segment, I did the study of dolls? Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to mention that. Um, I'm looking up Greek roots. Tech means to melt. Or tech uh, is childbirth. (laughs) Oh, you know, two very similar things. You know, (laughs) children melting, creating life, breaking things down into a liquid. One in the same, essentially. Oh, Kids. and there's also there's also techn, which is child. <laughs> I'm gonna tech my tech. T- I'm gonna tech my tech tonight. That sounds oh, really bad. It, it is. It means I'm gonna melt my child. Um. Anyway, <laughs> while giving birth. Um. Uh, uh, <laughs> my next one is hierology. Hierology. Uh, which I thought would be the study of hieroglyphs. Oh, which okay. is actually hieroglyphology. Hier- um, which is one of those terrible names. That has five consonants in a row, yeah. which is a sin, by the way. Yeah, um, it's it is. the twelfth commandment: "Thou shall not put five consonants in a row." What's um, the eleventh commandment? Thou shall not make a podcast. All right, <laughs> hierology is s- sacred literature 
or lore of the study of it. Which made me think of like how you can basically be like a hearologist for like video games or TV shows because like oh. nowadays like everything like has like quote unquote lore to it or whatever. It, because like it just says lore. But, like, people use lore for everything. It doesn't have to be sacred literature. Like what, What's really funny is the fact that, like, even Minecraft has lore. And yeah, it's a dude, game like, about placing blocks. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I would give more examples, but they're not worth mentioning here. On this podcast that doesn't have any lore. Um, right. Anyway, um, this one is spinology. Guess what that is? <laughs> is it the study of Beyblades? <laughs> Let her rip. I really wish. Let her rip. Un- unfortunately, it is not. Um, spinology, I thought it would be like spinning like wool. Spinning wool and turning into thread or whatever. It's not. Spinology it's... is the technique or skill of spinning drumsticks. That's quite sad. What, what, <laughs> what, what, wait, when do you spin drumsticks? Is that when the drummer like is being like fancy? like... Yeah. And then like... And like mm-hmm. spins it on his hand for like... Yeah. I'm gonna go look up spinning drumstick videos. Spinning... You've never seen that? Drumstick videos holy crap there's just a video called drumstick spinology it's just this dude just like spinning the crap out of the drumsticks instead of actually playing please send that to me (laughs) okay i have to also say the description of this video is a person called steve showing off his drumstick spinning (laughs) also the video is in 480p 4x3 resolution it was uploaded june 2nd 2006. 2006. Wow. This is an this is an OG YouTube, YouTube video. video. We I found one when, right here. I remember when YouTube was like this. Holy crap. It's got less it has only 300,000 views. Dude, I'm, sh- I'm sharing this Twitter right now. I'm sharing this, this to my Facebook This is a gem. Page. I'm doing everything right now. Just all the things. I'm posting them everywhere and it will be in the link in the description. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. There's so many, like... The quality is terrible, but I'm so glad we found this. I don't know. There's so many... Yeah, it makes me happy. I'm so glad the I chose that The top comment apology. was written four years ago. Was four what? Four years ago. When was it? Oh, the top comment was wow. written four years ago. Yikes. And by top comment, I mean none of them have any likes because that didn't exist at the time. Wait, no, what? What do you mean four years ago? They had... They had liking... You can like... Did comments. they? Because yes. not a single comment... Okay, never mind. One one comment in this whole sea has a like on it. Because I've been on YouTube for more than four years. I, well, I, I have too, but, like, I wasn't... Okay, yeah, that's actually, true. I actually was actually commenting on, like... Okay, but, like, five years ago? There's been a lot of changes that I... J- they happen so slowly that I don't even remember all the things that have changed. But YouTube is so different in culture and, like, just the format. Also, can I point out that the oldest comment, the very first comment... On this video is a uh, gay just a little time capsule right there for you guys. Anyway, my Classic. next lology is ricketsiology, ricketsiology. Um, which I really hoped was the study of a guy named Ricketts. I really it's hope not. so too. It's it- the study of ricketsia. Obviously, rickettsia. Rickettsia is a genus of non-motile, gram-negative, non-spore-forming, highly pleomorphic bacteria. Yeah, it's it's quite boring. Um, so it's like a it's like a particle thingy. Uh, it has to do with cells. Um, I don't really care. Rickettsia just sounds like um like a fictional universe and a guy named Rick made up and just named after himself because he's lazy. Rickettsia. Yeah, no, he definitely Holy is. Holy crap. Also in this article, these are some amazing words. All of them are more than 15 letters long. What are you talking about? Dude, Where? can I be in the science field? On this Wikipedia page for Ricketsia, there's a diagram and every single word is more than 15 letters long. Anaplasmatases. Say? E-A-A-E. That is not... You, you can't put four vowels in a row. That's... Okay. Oh, I'm blimey. Done. Hello. Yeah. Wow. Did you find it? I found it. Dang. Oh my gosh, look, species. They're all, they all start with Ricketsia. Yeah. Ricketsia P- Peacocky. Ricketsia Parker. Ricketsia Riff of Cephanolity. Oh my gosh, <laughs> look. Ricketsia Ricketsia. There's one called Ricketsia Helvetica. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I just, I love the, the Ricketsia Ricketsia. That's amazing. This makes me so happy. Segment two. 
Half-Life. This segment is a new one. So how it works, as I've been told by the Noah, is that what you do is you tell a story in 60 seconds and you're given a word for your prompt. And then after you do that, you say the same story in half of the time and then half of that time. And then until like it's like one second is how it works. Indeed. So it's called Half-Life because you tell a story and then you your time is cut in half, then in half, then in half, then half. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a word. As soon as I tell you your word, you have 60 seconds on the clock. <sighs> Are you What's ready? The word? the word is alibi. Uh, so I was like on the judge's stand and he's like, what's your alibi? And I was like, define alibi. And he's like, I don't know what alibi means. And he's like, and I'm like, wait, what? How old are you? And he's like, I'm like 60. And he's, and then he's like, how old are you? And I'm like, I'm like 35. And he's like, you don't know what alibi means? I'm like, you don't know what alibi means? You're almost twice my age. And he's like, I don't know. I just went to law school. I thought it had something to do with law. And then I was like, all right, I'm out. I leave the courtroom and I go straight to the closest Baskin Robbins. I get myself a tall scoop of alibi, which obviously is my favorite um, flavor of ice cream. Uh, and as I'm eating that, I look outside, and what do you know? It's the judge. This time, he's riding on top of a 13-foot Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, pretty small for a Tyrannosaurus Rex, but you know, uh, you get what you can get. Stop. Okay, so now you have to tell that whole story again. The same story in 30 seconds. All right. All right. I will give you a boop at 15 seconds. <laughs> okay, three. All right. Two, one, go. Okay, me, I'm in a courtroom. There's also a judge and he asked me for the alibi and I say, I don't know what that means. And then he says, he doesn't know what it means. And I'm like, how can you not know what that means? You're so old. And he'll be like, how can you not know that, what that means? That's so young and he's 60 and I'm 35. And Boop. so I just run out of the courtroom and then I go to Baskin Robbins and I eat an alibi ice cream and outside he's there with a T-Rex. He's riding a 13 foot T-Rex, uh, which isn't very big, but I'm eating my ice cream cone. And then I walk outside of the Baskin Robbins and I come face to face with him and I'm like, Stop. you're going Okay, so you added to that story. So now you have to incorporate all of the story as of yet into the the next 15 seconds. Okay. Which is exactly how this works, and this is you're doing well. Okay, you have 15 seconds to tell the same story. I will, again, okay. give you uh, a boop at seven and a half seconds. Okay. Three, two, one, go. I'm in a courtroom. I don't know what alibi means. The judge doesn't know what it means either. We can't believe that either of us don't know what it means. So I go ahead and I leave the courtroom and I go <gasps> to Baskin Robbins and I get a tall scoop of alibi, which is a type of ice cream. And outside, there's the judge riding a 13-foot dinosaur. And so I walk out and I'm like, you there. Stop right Stop. there. <laughs> yes. Okay. You now have seven and a half seconds to tell that whole story. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Me and a judge are in a courtroom. We don't know what alibi means, so I go to Baskin Robbins and I get a tall scoop of ice cream and then I lick it and then outside is the judge with a 13-foot dinosaur and I walk outside with my ice cream cone and I say, you. <laughs> okay, you have three seconds to tell that story. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Judge Baskin Robbins dinosaur. <laughs> you have one second to tell the whole story. Are you ready? Yes. Set. Go. Ice cream. Time. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to fit in the <laughs> sentence. That's what it's it's really funny when you're watching this happen un, watch it unfold and people like have to go all over the stage in a very short amount of time because you have to oh remember where gosh. you were placed. Yeah. <laughs> so, that is Half-Life. I'm assuming That's you like awesome. it and I do too. Oh, it's exhausting, but, like, oh, it's so fun, especially when you get down to, like, the ends. I thought it was going to be, like, terrifying, but no. Okay, um, I'm going to go grab a random word that I <laughs> definitely already have for you ready, of course. All right, all right. I've been doing this podcast for two seasons, obviously. Okay, your random word is, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Pharaoh. Pharaoh, Pharaoh. I told him, I said, let my people go, please, because I am Moses, actually. Well, I'm not Moses, but I'm very close to him. My name is George, and um, I was also there. I was not, I was written out of the Bible because of some things that I did. Not going to get into that, but basically, I went to Pharaoh first, and I was like, you know what, Pharaoh? You should let the Moses' people go. And then he was like, nah, man. 
And so um, what I did was I took out my laser gun because <laughs> the reason that I was written out is because, you know, I was a time traveler. So I'm a time traveler and I went back to uh, Egypt to where all the slaves were. And basically I went to Pharaoh and I, I was like, hey, um, please let these people go. It'll be much better for you because your son is going to get killed if you uh, keep oppressing these people. And he's like, Pfft why should I trust you? You have a weird metal arm. And I was like, okay, fine. This is awesome. You know what? So what I did is I basically um, teleported back into the future and I told my whole family this. And uh, they were and like, fair. stop. That's it. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now there's 30 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Yep. Go. Hi, my name is George. I'm a time traveler. So I went back in time to when Moses was around and I went up to Pharaoh and I was like, hey, Pharaoh, you suck. Let the people go or else your son's going to die. And he's all like, ah, no, that I can't believe you. You have a metal arm. And I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. I don't care. Um, uh, I was written out of the Bible also. So I went back to the future, told my whole family about this whole story. And they're all like, man, you know what, George? We still love you. And I'm you shouldn't have done that because that completely screwed up the time continuum. And um, that's why you're not in the Bible. And, and I was like, okay. Whew, I added so much more there. Okay. <laughs> you're ready to fit that all in there. Uh, it's 15 7. seconds. 7.5. Weasley. Oh wait, goodness. Wait, hold on. I have, I hold have on. 15 seconds. I'm on. I accidentally closed out of the other tab. Oof, Control uh. Shift T. <laughs> Control Shift T. For those who don't know, s- if you are on a Mac, Command Shift T opens up the previously closed tab, and if you're on a PC, Control Shift T uh, opens it back up. Just also, a little if tip you're for on you a Mac, get a new computer. All that right, also 15 seconds point. on the clock. Three, <clears throat> two, one. Go. I'm a time traveler named George. I went back to the time and told Pharaoh, get the heck out of here. Your son's going to die. So I went back to the future because Pharaoh was like, no, we don't like you. I don't like your metal arm. Um, and I was written out of the Bible. And then so I told my family about all this. And they're like, oh, man, we, that really sucks. But you shouldn't have done that because you messed up the time. Stop. Continuum. Okay. I think I did pretty well. Am I enunciating my words just fine or? Yeah, yeah. No, I can I can, I can, can totally understand you. Okay. Uh, you're just totally frantic as well. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> seven seven and a half seconds ready set go i'm i'm george pharaoh went back into the time he doesn't care metal arm i'm Ooh. back hello family dang it <laughs> that was so Stop. bad okay okay i got this i got this okay i have three, three seconds. seconds to tell a story okay okay ready set go time travel pharaoh back into the future family Stop. hi okay i got this <laughs> one second are you ready okay Yes. Ready, set, go. Pharaoh time travel. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of my... Like, you hadn't what? said anything, and the little, like, timer bar was already halfway through. <laughs> it's kind of stressful. Um, one of my best improv performances, like, best improv moments that I had ever mm-hmm. have was during this game. So, basically, I was in the water... Um, and like after like a shipwreck or something with my, with this other girl that I was doing this with and we were like swimming and then she like went down into the, the water to find something and then she ended up dying. And so what ended up happening was, um, I was very quick to, to like say, Oh, welcome to heaven. And then they were like, uh, she was like, Oh, John, is that you? I'm like, no, I'm in evil. Uh, no, I'm his twin brother. We died in, I died in the womb and then it was, the time was over. And that was that was still one moment that I, I was so awesome. I was so quick on my feet, and I'm still really proud of it. That's that's like the best moment ever. Holy cow! It was amazing. I love that. Yeah, that uh, was a fun segment. That was. I love that segment. That is definitely one we're gonna bring I, back. I I had quite a bit of fun. I'm excited to do that again sometime. Segment three. We're gonna do something new, but also kind of similar to Will You Press the Button called Would You Rather. It's a classic game where basically it asks you a question and says would you rather this or would you rather that um ben would you rather this or that uh th- this oh my gosh same i would also rather this um ben for our first question would you rather not be able to taste or not be able to smell mm. that's a tricky one they're both like totally subdued like senses that you don't really care about that much so you know how like people are like some people can't feel pain, and, like, on the surface, you're like, oh, that's kind of nice, because no pain, but it sucks because, like, you don't know if something's bad or whatever. Yeah. I feel like taste could be the same way. Like, it could be, like, food is literally fuel to you. 
Like, you just, like, eat the healthiest food ever because you do not care. It's like taking a shower, basically. But if, like, food is totally spoiled or rotten, you'll yeah. have no idea. You'll just yeah. be like, oh, well. Well, I was thinking the similar thing with um, not being able to smell. If there's, like, a some sort of mold or, like, gas leak or something. Yeah. But the thing is, I think other people could do that. So yeah, it's, it's not it's, very common. No, I think I'd much rather not be able to smell. I know a few people who, like, can't smell. Yeah, yeah, I know. Their noses don't work. So I'm going to say I'd much rather not be able to smell. Because oh. the fact of the matter is, all of our senses, in some way or another, are meant to tell us when bad things are happening or there's something dangerous around us. So yeah. any sense that you get rid of is, somehow can endanger you in a exactly. small or large way. Yep. And I think that uh, taste will be one that will definitely have, like, a effect on you the most. Ooh. Here's one. Would you rather dump someone or get dumped? I know this is like shallow, like a eh, relationship, but like it's it's an important question. What what side would you rather be on? That's well, the thing is, that is a <laughs> that is a question that is based entirely on circumstance. Well, yes, it is. But like in general, if someone was like, OK, you're in a bad situation. No, it's because that's the like. Yes, it is entirely circumstantial. Which would make you feel crummier in the oh, hmm. in the most objective sense? If you could, like, negligate whatever the person was, whatever happened was. Oh, this is really sucks because I'm a very empathetic person. <laughs> exactly. Me too. Mm. Yeah. So, like, if I break up with someone, I don't, I, I don't want to hurt them at all. You know what? I'd much rather get. Dumped. I, I would too. That's, that's what I was gonna say. I was like, I, I. I'd much rather be like a victim and be like, boo hoo, poor me, yeah. than be like, yeah, I did that to someone. Yikes, yeah. you know? And the thing is, I I feel like what I would be able to do is like think about it more objectively and like get my mind straight, but I don't exactly know how they could react. So I'd much rather get dumped than. And also, I think that I would be able to see the reasoning behind it. So like I would be able to get over it because of that. So yeah, no, I definitely think I'd rather be dumped than to dump someone because i don't want to hurt anyone for any reason. yeah yeah I, I get it yeah ben yes would you rather be a hometown hero or be a c-level celebrity no one really likes i feel like this one is a no-brainer so here's the thing like hometown hero is great because everybody likes you but like everybody thinks the same kind of as you and it's kind of like narrow you know what i mean like it's probably mm -hmm. for one reason that you might not even like being known for with the sea level celebrity you don't have to have people flocking to you all the time but you have money and you have a pretty good amount of freedom mm -hmm. um i'm seeing that as a great palette to become a B like something celebrity. like a hometown hero yeah or like yeah <laughs> I, I know that's like a, a stupid cheat or whatever no that totally makes like, sense I, I don't know if you're reasoning like that that actually is some good reasoning so you'd rather be a C-level celebrity that no one likes? Yeah. Yeah, okay. essentially. I'd rather be a hometown hero. Because frankly, if I'm a hometown hero, that means I did something to help people. And people wouldn't dislike me. And like, I don't need to be liked by everyone. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. But like, I don't like being disliked by a lot of people. The thing is, I'm not used to it. Which is a really arrogant thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to people disliking me. No, uh, no, I get it. I get it. Like, yeah, you get, you get comfortable there. And then when people don't, it's like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Noah, would you rather eat nothing but dog treats or eat nothing but cat food? Uh, I feel like cat food would have more nutrients. In addition, it is a lot of times basically just tuna. So I'd say cat food. Okay. I have a story uh, about one time I was driving with a coworker. I was in a car. And there looked to be what looked like gingerbread cookies on the dash. I was like, oh, they made cookies. And he's like, oh, yeah, those look like pretty good cookies. Um, for the record, he had no idea what they are, were. Uh -huh. um, he was making all of this up on the spot. And I was like, do you think anyone would mind if we had one? And he's like, no, no, that's not what I said. No, I was like, they look like some pretty strange cookies. And he's like, you should try one. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah, no, it's fine. And so I ate one and I was like, huh, this really doesn't taste like much. And then all of a sudden he starts giggling a little bit and I burst out laughing and I'm like, 
are these dog treats? And he's like, I bet you they are. And so I <laughs> ate a whole dog treat and it was not bad. It was pretty good. And then I tried to make him eat one. He was like, nah, dog treats are not bad at all. I just thought it was like a really stale like cookie. Well, another story that's in the same vein is we have, uh, we used to have a lot of dogs and my parents used to breed Bernie's mountain dogs, which is a very specific type of breed. Um, right. We would get big bags of dog food from like Costco and all that jazz and then to feed these dogs. And what me and my sisters would do would be to eat some of the dog food. Oh. The little tiny, like the little tiny pellets. Not like treats that oh, were yeah, sweet. Yeah. I would just, we would just eat those. And then like when, when my friends would come over, I'd be like, hey, try some dog food. But it was oh, like that, so... that really dry stuff that were in like little tiny beads. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. that. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it, I don't remember what they taste like <laughs> or if, if they were good at all. But um, no, I, that's uh, something uh, I did. So See, I can't imagine eating, like, a wet, like, animal Oh, no, food. gross. That stuff just sounds just... I mean... Uh, sounds ugh. quite nasty. It's just, it's just like, maybe, I don't know. Hmm. Something about it being wet, like... I know what you mean. Maybe maybe I would rather have the dog treats. Yeah, because it's yeah. just boring then. I don't yeah. know. Last question. Would you rather listen to only one song for the rest of your life or listen to no music for your, the rest of your life? No, I've, uh, I've asked this this question to myself before. Um, as long as it's Smash Mouth and I die within the next five years. <laughs> That's my answer. It's a good answer. That was the end of the show. Uh, we hope you did enjoy it. What did we learn today, Noah? Hmm, we learned that I used to eat dog food. I also learned that you shouldn't go back in time and try to, like, change stuff, uh, or else it disrupts the space-time continuum. Indeed, I also learned... That technology is actually just the study of children. I found out that anthropology is this, not the study of arthropods. You can find Noah at, at Nomich underscore, and you can find me at Tistendo. You can send the podcast an email at segmented.fm at gmail.com, and you can support the podcast on Patreon at patreon.com slash segmentedfm, where you can get extra goodies, uh, talk to Noah on live chat, and occasionally listen to recording sessions live. But the best way that you can support the podcast is by leaving a review on the iTunes uh, and by sharing it with what you people call your friends. Do it. It's, it's, Do it for a, the vine. It's, it's a great idea. Please, please plug the podcast. And also I'd like to note, thank you for everyone who tuned in for season two. It was awesome. I'm glad that you guys seem to be enjoying it, and you guys are just great. Yes, thank you. Just yeah, you, you are really quite wonderful people. We love you the best. Mm-hmm. Ist. we love you yeah. the best out of all of the seg- out of all the podcast people. Out of all the segments, um, all of them. Out of all the segments that we, you do. are my favorite segment. Ah, <gasps> are that is that what our listeners are officially called? Segments. Oh, <laughs> that's our fan base. The segments. <laughs> segments it sounds like we're a big caterpillar (laughs) we are we're all just one hive mind uh all right uh with that have a cool time at disneyland ciao bye see ya segmented season three we should play mafia sometime Oh, that would be fun with only two people? Yeah. Be, Have you I ever be, done that before? I bet you're the murderer. No, <laughs> never. Um, Actually, no. I'm the storyteller. I tell the stories. So am I the murderer and the one that gets murdered? Uh, Yes. You play multiple characters that are that are all playing Mafia at the same time. <laughs> that would actually be kind of amazing. Um, you pee your pants once a day at a random time or you poop your pants once a day at a random time. You really found that funny, didn't you? I told myself I'm not going to laugh. It's not funny at all. There's <laughs> nothing funny about it. I just I couldn't do it. <laughs> you feeling okay? Quite.